So check this out. This is some uh, BTS from the filming of Unit 19 for our proof of concept. <laughs> Shot 5A, scene 19, take one. And mean. So arms folded, yeah. So today I'm using the F8 recorder by Zoom. Uh, very, very sturdy piece of equipment. It's got its own time code, um, sync in and out. Uh, it's you can change the frame rate to match whatever the camera's doing so you don't get any drift. It's really important guys who are doing sound. You may not think about it at first, but get your frame rates matched if you can help it, especially for longer takes. So E214, so microphone third sensor, 4.5k, full raw, um, log, all those the shiny things that people are like cameras will understand. Um, yeah. and the beauty being, uh, because of these things, we can operate remotely, so I can just—I'm literally the only person on set, so apart from the soundy sometimes, and everyone else can be in a separate room, and they can do everything with you via iPads and things like that. Yeah. Just being to various devices around building. So, yeah. Can you bring it up? Go. Perfect. Hi, my name is Zora Goodin and I play the role of Captain Kia Harrison in Unit 19. Hello, my name is Grace Matthews and I'm playing Frank AI in Unit 19. And I'm Andrew Rolf and I'm playing Commander Wilkes in Unit 19. The film is set. <laughs> Right here in my martial arts studio. <laughs> so um, at the moment we're filming on set, which has uh, been built um, at my academy, and the set is basically the station, the ship that's in space right now. So we've built um, like our command room. We have our spaceship corridors. We have some other kind of rooms and things that are on the ship as well. We have our AI room. Uh, we have our cryo chambers. Um, we've got our quarters. We have like a canteen communal area. Um, where the rest of the Unit 19 girls and Frank and Commander Wilkes have a little bit of banter, which is really cool. I'm looking forward to shooting those scenes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so basically right now we're on our spaceship. We were just blown away when we first arrived here. The set that had been built and all the props and how it all came alive and the professionalism of the equipment. And the ingenuity, I think, from uh, the way people had taken regular everyday products, especially with things like the props, and transformed them into high-tech galactic weapons and other props. Um, so basically, Vic wrote um, Unit 90 uh, along with David. Don't um, blame me. <laughs> so they came up with a concept, but I think during COVID, my academy and my business has been closed. Um, so it's a 9,000 square foot building, so we thought there's you know, plenty of opportunity here to sort of build this set and kind of get this film started during the lockdown. So we're kind of shooting this as a little bit of a proof of concept. And then when we shoot the rest of the film, or the main sort of chunk of the film in sort of summer, autumn, we'll be on location. So we've used the time with my business being closed to kind of build the sets here, since we have the facility and all the different rooms. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got a kitchen, we've got different rooms for kind of hair and makeup and green screen and photographs and stills and actually, you know, room to kind of build the sets and things like that. So that's been really cool. So we've kind of made use of our time and our space and tried to be sort of proactive instead of wait for COVID to be finished and done where then, you know, restrictions lifted before we start filming. Mm -hmm. We kind of wanted to go, you know what, we can do this. We have time. Also, my business reopens on the 12th of April, so we've got to kind of, you know, get it done. Um, <laughs> which is difficult because once we was like, okay, let's do the film, let's do this, then we had the announcement and the roadmap. Yeah. Are you going to open on the 12th? Okay, yeah. so we, we sort of like, okay, let's get this done. It was something we've never been involved with before. Uh, though we take photographs at events on green screen, we've never been involved in films and the, the whole concept of that. And we came along uh, to have a meeting and they were building the stage, the props, the background, the whole uh, set. And I was just blown away with the commitment 
and the, the effort they would be putting into this. So we were on board. So yeah, um, Frank <clears throat> has been, he obviously is a, a robot and from a father has sent down um, programming to be put inside me from Wilkes and then I, my job is to basically join the Unit 19 team. So with Kia um, and with the rest of the team. Uh, heading down to uh, the planet, but this is much as Frank is aware of at the moment. Frank is also not allowed to blink. Not allowed to what? Blink. Yeah, so hard. <laughs> <laughs> so hard. I try and blink when I move, but oh my god, it's the hardest thing I've done. So I'm yeah. I'm a paradigm employee, and I'm the commander of the Nix Two, which is a paradigm transporter, and I have Zara and her team, Unit Nineteen, actually on the team. So, um, or actually on the ship. So they don't report into me. Um, I'm probably a little bit senior, more senior than you am I in the... Yeah, in the, yeah. Chat the other day, didn't yeah. as well. So yeah. we have a mutual respect, but I'm sort of the head of the Unit 19, but Commander Wilkes is the commander of the ship. Yeah. Protection or... Scenarios. Mercenaries. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, you're putting me we'll on the spot right now. Yeah. <laughs> I think I was going to say there's a, there's a planet that we've lost communication with and... Um, they've sent a distress signal, so we're starting to, to go down and, and as Zara says at this stage, it's, it's unclear really what's happening down there. Yeah. Um, but there were a number of professors that were down there that were doing experiments um, and there's been a lot of data collected that we're keen to make sure it doesn't get lost during this expedition. So really, I guess that's what you're going down for, right? That's what we're going down for, but at Recovery the and secure <laughs> data protocol. Yes, exactly that. <laughs> so we're going to do that, but we're also a little bit unsure as, you know, we don't feel, that we feel like there's something quite, you know, not quite right with what we've been asked to do as well. Mm. Something sort of must have happened or something's kind of going on. Thank you very much. So I am Professor Larkin. I am a professor and quite frankly obsessed with elements. I get very excited about elements. Um, I'm Professor Roberts and just like Professor Larkin, um, I love... Yo! <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name is Professor Roberts, and just like Professor Larkin, um, this, the greatest thrill I get is through discovery. Mm. Well yes. said. Thank you, Professor. Mm. Pleasure. What has been created here is inspirational. I mean, it brings out the kind of the eight-year-old little Star yeah. Wars fan in oh me when you're running around corridors and uh, and playing on consoles and everything. So this is this is a bit of a dream job, I think. For me. Is this the first yeah. space um, movie that you guys have done? Second for me. Second for you. Yeah, second ah. for me. But first like for me. Said, it does feel a different level. Sorry, it does. A different yeah. level to that. Does it? Carry on. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. No. First, <laughs> first for me. First for me. So the bar has been set high. Yeah. I did a sci-fi in America. It's one of the first things I did, like in 2006, like a long time ago. Uh, but it was nothing uh, sort of on scale, and that was a very, very low-budget independent film, um, which was great fun. Which kind of, you know, was my first kind of foot in the door, really. But I think I'm just really pleased that everybody likes the set, and that's what we've done here. Because I think when you sort of say, right, we're going to be building the sets in my martial arts studio, you know, you kind of already have like a bit of a preconception of you know how good or bad it might be. But I think everybody that's come on board the ship um, has sort of gone, oh, wow, this is actually really good. Like, it's not what they expected, which which is fantastic. And, and a credit to the guys that have, you know, put the time in again. Um, my dad, Karina, and Mel, um, you know, just, just putting this together. And then the awesome camera team have come in and they've done all this practical lighting and they've kind of now come and brought it to life as well. Um, so, that, you know, Team Reflector have done a great job and, you know, all these kind of things here, it's just... Yeah, she just kind of brought it to life. And now all the actors are here. This is the first day actually when all of the cast are here yeah. on the same day. So um, we've got a scene to shoot a bit later with us all in there. So that's going to be lots of fun. This was a huge step up for a uh, huge step up for me from going to costumes and props, you know, and everything. And it was like all of a sudden, I'm going to build a spaceship. I'm going to create corridors, a command room. Um, the cockpit, you know, all together. I, I was going to have people like a team underneath me, and I'm like, okay, okay, what do I do? All the self doubt and all the nerves all come in. Can I do this? Can I do this? And I remember doing, uh, creating some of these props in my kitchen over the first couple of weeks, and they were building up, and I was adding lights to them, and I did some designs, and they came back to me and said, well, do you know what? We want to base the idea of the film around your design, and I'm like, wow, you know, this is, this is huge, you know, the nerves, the excitement, you know, building up, and... 
I made about, I can remember making about 15 props in my kitchen and I'm thinking, yeah, that's going to be enough. That's going to be enough for, you know, for the film. I think we've created actually now around about 200 props um, all together, probably even more. Uh, doing all the corridors, putting the lighting in, uh, getting all the rolls, you know, it was just it was constant painting and everything and then seeing it slowly building up and coming together and then seeing it on uh, on photos and everybody's reaction it was just amazing uh, hi i'm john i'm the props master on unit 19. um basically my main role is to uh i'll come up with a design and concept and build all the props um that are the implements that the actors interact with um from weapons uh to their um, insignias their dog tags, the logos on the, the, the three corporations, um, down to their side arms, uh, their knives, their helmets. So it's literally try and pull all the information that's inside the producer and the writer's heads into something that's real um, and just concepts that way. So yeah, uh, making sure that anything that the, the, actress, the actors and actresses all interact with, um, even down to the cups that they're using on set, that, you know, we've, we've got specific ones. So just making sure what's what's there. So yeah. Where, where does Helen need to put her arm? She's going to go right in there. Um, there's there. But we can take that shot. So oh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 Is it is that is it finished on whiskey? She's new to it, isn't it? wears his lucky cowboy hat. She also has a bad habit of smoking cigars and drinking too much whiskey. Yes, obviously. Doc, I understand. But the others, I understand Nubi well, and she's new to your team. Well. <laughs> now, music toys, I can show you. Now, music toys, I love you forever. Shining, shimmering, splendid. My name is Rachel Warren, and I am playing Elaine Rogers, aka. Doc. Oh, look at this gun, isn't it complete? Now my world is so sleek. <laughs> also, we have a little guest here today. This is called Thea, and she is my dog. That's it, set dog vibes today. My character is a medic on the ship, but she's also pretty quirky. Um, she likes to go against the grind. She loves westerns and cowboys, and she kind of thinks she is one. Um, and also, she loves chewing on tobacco and cigars and things like that. Um, and yeah, she's, she's really fun to play, really fun. It's funny as well, it's just put on that I am the medic. Doc is a medic, but she drinks whiskey and smokes cigars. <laughs> Enough said. <laughs> I have so many props, it's ridiculous. I have like, Cigars coming out my mouth. I have two guns, then I have a big gun, then I have a prop spinning gun, hat. You know, it's but to do with that, even like the dog collars here, it has such intricate detail on, and then it has a barcode which we're yet to understand what it is, but apparently it is for something. But also on them, we have our character's name as well, and it's things like we have the logo here. Um, everything has been thought of. On our hats, we have our names. It's just, it's just blown away. And the set as well, the attention to detail on set. Um, I said this before, the first time I walked on set, I was actually blown away so much that I actually got a little bit choked up. I'm Helen Pawson. I'm playing the role of Veronica Wayne, who is the rogue pilot. Wow, she's quite a mysterious character, quite a hard one to work out, actually. Um, she likes to observe everybody. Um, quite quiet. You don't really know what she's going to do next. Um, she, yeah, so she's the pilot. So she has kind of like quite a calm confidence because she's flying the ship. I think people are just going to be wowed by it because I just think... A lot of people, like, they may think it's, you know, like a low-budget movie, independent movie, and they might think, like, oh, you know, I wonder what it's going to look like. But I've got a lot of confidence in that people are just going to be like, wow. Yeah. 
and you pull out a bit. Yeah. There you go, that's, that's all right. It. There you go. Yeah. Down a bit. Thank you. There Thank you. you. Shot five, scene 12, take one. Here. Take a look. My name is Tori. I'm playing Rebecca Willis, aka Newton. Um, I've, from the start, seen the set grow because uh, coming in with Prop Master, because he is um, my father, so coming in with the weekends, um, I'd come in and I would constantly see the set grow and grow and grow. And coming in for the first time to film, I I was blown away of how magnificent it looked and then coming on filming, seeing it all come together is brilliant. The props, like Rachel said, uh, they're all absolutely phenomenal. All the, the little detail with everything is just it's 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 amazing. It's it's absolutely fantastic. It really is. He is the king of props. And a privilege to be honest. Um the hard bit was trying to get the ideas of those concepts out of um, the director and the writer's heads, um, David and Vic, trying to get out of, into concept of what could be originality. Um, but yeah, to be approached from them seeing stuff I'd produced already, um, just for a hobby and fun, um, to go, do you know what? Where we can see some uh, some promise here, and you know, let's uh, let's get the creative juices flowing. Um, and when they started flowing, it was uh, it was hard to stop them. Um, and they kept going. They, they're uh, bringing it out and, and getting the uh, the thumbs up and the yes, that's exactly what I wanted. Um, that's the hardest bit, getting that vision that's in someone else's head to be a physical prop. I'm sure it's safe to stay around you crazy ladies for too long. Yeah, that means not equal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And obviously, the closer you come to here, the more the more. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm just gonna wing it and do it right every yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Right every time. Yeah. Yeah. Close a minute. Lovely. Female-led, strong characters. Every character is unique in their own way. You can't tell if a character is is uh, good or bad. Kind of like real life. Um, and it's a story and a half that will not only have people excited, but it will keep people feeling the characters, having emotion for the characters, loving what the characters do. Some people will hate the characters simply because it's such a well-written, well-directed, um, well-told story. It is particularly unique. Um, I've been a big advocate of female-led films for a while. I think with such a strong, diverse and inclusive cast, it's something that is um, what the industry is crying out for and is what is really what people are looking for. On top of that, there's a lot of positive representation, which again is another positive. On top of that, the high production value means that it's something that people are going to enjoy watching and not just uh, change the channel. It's something they're going to be invested in and interested in. Um, uh, the first day I came on to a set, I was blown away. Um, it was nice because Blix, being uh, the director, and Zara have been sending us um, pictures just to kind of give us an idea of the of the film set. But when I actually got here and able to walk around before filming my first scene, blown away. Uh, just what they've been able to achieve with the materials they've used and what they were explaining, like certain things, because I was just uh, I just couldn't believe what we were walking on. And it is kind of like living every child's dream, like kind of a Star Wars, Star Trek feel to it. Come on, Mark it. Scene 18. Shot five, take four. Yeah. Uh, my name is Giedrija Skite and I'm playing the role of Ivana Sidorov, aka Killer B. I guess her nickname tells a lot about her. So she's actually of Russian heritage and she loves her um, her heritage and she speaks a lot in, uh, in Russian and she's a killing machine. Um, I feel like for me it's boring, there's nothing to kill and I think sometimes <laughs> you might get, I get a bit in trouble just because I see red everywhere I go. I think why it's going to be different from the other sci-fi movies, the first things first is actually it's an all-female lead cast. 
I think you usually get one female who is a strong character. Okay, sometimes maybe two, but we actually have five five females, and most importantly, it's led by Zara, who is actually a boss lady in real life. So it's like you can't get any better than that. And of course, it's just like Zara mentioned before that this is such a collective effort. We actually mm-hmm. everyone involved putting so much effort, and it feels really like a family to be on set. So I think to get this community on a film set is a very, very precious thing. Okay. Shot one, C9, take two. Stand by, everyone. The sets and the props and everything involved and the whole sort of team effort behind the scenes have been amazing. Um, so I need to give a shout out to uh, John Nursel, who is the prop master, um, Karina Vischer, who is the set designer, um, Andy Fivian, uh, my father bear, who um, is the sort of joiner and the set builder, and also Melanie Gascoigne, who has been on hand um, day in, day out during the painting and anything else that is required in terms of building the set uh, and making things come together as well. And I think the whole team collectively, as well as Team Reflector, um, you know, Nick Hardy came on board as a DOP and he's put all the lighting in there as well. So it's kind of brought all the sets to life. But um, we've had lots of help from local businesses in terms of um, donations and just helping with little things like wardrobe and boots and props and um, sort of some set dressing things and things like that. So I think it's all come together really nicely. But I'm just really happy that um, the rest of the cast and crew appreciate the set and they, they've all been really impressed with it as well. So I think it's, yeah. it's come together really well. <laughs> oh, that's me out of here for now then. Hopefully see you guys soon. Next stop is Deep Space. Zara out. <laughs>